I think the postmodern objection to meaning is actually wrong. Well, we, we talked about this earlier. I do believe that there's a transcendent ethic. And I do believe that it touches on the metaphysical. I believe that people experience that because people are perfectly capable of having unutterably profound religious experiences. And the naturalistic materialists don't know what the hell to do with that. They have no idea what to do with that fact. Say, well, it's delusional. It's like, well, hang on a sec. People who have those experiences appear to be more successful and healthier. Mm -hmm. It's like, so in exactly in what manner is that delusional? And if you induce it in the lab with psilocybin, for example, among people who are dying of cancer, their fear of death goes away. It's like, that's, you're gonna just lay, lay that out there as delusional, are you? They'll quit smoking, 85% success rate with one mystical experience on psilocybin produces 85% cessation rate in smoking. Yeah. It's completely, and with uh, MDMA, ecstasy, mm -hmm. The three treatments with MDMA, that's what the current research indicates, produces a 72% cure rate for intractable post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. It's like, those are miracle cures and no one, and they have to be accompanied by the mystical experience. No one knows how to account for that. And so there so is it's a, a transcendent so it's a very ethic. So it's a very physical thing. I mean, in a case mm. like that, you talk about ayahuasca or any of these things, right? The, you're eating something, mm -hmm. you're ingesting something, smoking it, whatever it is. It's physical, it's here and now, but the experience is, is, metaphysical. is metaphysical. Sure, that's a place where the biological and the transcendent touch, and we don't know what to make of that. Yeah. Well, that's why psychedelics threw our whole culture into such a, such a, flipped this upside down. No one knew what to do with them. You know, I mean, the Indians regarded psilocybin as food of the gods for a reason. And, yeah. and when, when people have encountered psychedelic substances throughout human history, that's always how they've been characterized. Yeah. It's right, food of the gods. It's like, beware of them but they're, they open the door to the transcendent. And, well, I think the evidence that they are doing something, that psychedelic substances are doing something that we seriously don't understand at all, no. not a bit, is overwhelming. Rick Strassman wrote a book on his experiences giving DMT to a whole bunch of people down in, he was at, in Austin, I think. And Strassman's a pretty straight scientist, you know, he was interested in measuring psychophysiological responses to the drugs. Well, he'd give people DMT and they all came back with the same story. I was blasted out of my consciousness. I went, I met a whole bunch of alien beings. Uh -huh. They were really surprised I was there. <laughs> and then I came back and it was the most real thing that's ever happened to me. And Strassman would say, well, you know, well, you had a Jungian archetypal experience or it was a dream. And they'd say, you don't you understand. Yeah. And he got so distraught because of these continual reports that he had stopped doing the research. Yeah, and it, like, I'm not making a claim for, a, for anything metaphysical here, but I'm definitely pointing out that there are undeniable realms of human experience that involve religious experience and a sense of the infinite transcendent that look like they're healthy and that you cannot deny. Yeah. Well, so what are you supposed to do with that? You, well. You so put they, it in a box and you say, well, we're not going to pay attention to it. It's like, that's not going to work. Yeah, that's not going to work. And I've done a lot of those things that you just mentioned and virtually always had good experiences on them. Now, as someone that I'm pretty sure has never smoked weed, no, I've never you haven't eaten drugs, mushrooms, yeah. you haven't, no, okay, you haven't done MDMA yeah, and, and barely, all that stuff. I barely will take a drink, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've done all of those things. I don't really do, well, I mean, I smoke some weed, but I don't, I'm not doing, I haven't done ecstasy in years and, and mushrooms I did do about a year ago and I had a great day and I kind of wandered <laughs> around and, and I thought, I, you know, I felt so some, some things happening. I didn't, I, when I did them in college, I had a couple of those type of transcendent feeling. I was just part of something, whatever. But so when you hear all this, mm -hmm. as someone that doesn't partake in any of this stuff, uh, what do you make of, of that? That people can perhaps use some substances that you're not down mm -hmm. with on a personal level to get to a place that I think you actually think is a good place. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the answer is that it depends on you know, the level of expertise of the person using it is what I would suggest, you know, the idea, like I'm not against prescription medication. So if you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, an actual program that's gonna better somebody's life, right. that's one thing. But if it's somebody who's just, I wanna have a religious experience, let me pop some LSD. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there, there's some serious downsides to drugs that I, I, I do wonder if it is necessary. Well, two things. One, uh, in, in, in Judaism, and I keep reverting back to this because I know it's the religion I know, um, but there, there's two kind of schools of thought with regard to Judaism. One are, are called the, uh, the, the Misnagdim, 
Uh, these are people who are sort of enlightenment mentality, hard science folks, and they're the Hasidim. And the Hasidim are the people who you see for like Chabad. They have the, the big beards and they have the payas, uh, and they and they like to dance and they drink on, on Purim and, and all this. And they're, they're wonderful people. And they, they do great outreach specifically because they're so spiritual. And I tend to be more of a snagid than a, than a Hasid, meaning that mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, I, I try I to get like to, to my... I see you dance. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not, it's not pretty. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> uh, but I, I, I try to get to spirituality through reason as opposed to through experience Mm -hmm. Uh, simply because I think that well I know people who have had religious experience and it's really changed them Mm -hmm. I think there are also a lot of people who have religious experience and it lasts for a given amount of time and then they're done with the religious experience and they just go back to doing whatever they're doing right I mean this is what you were doing in college so I think that if you're looking for that as a gateway out of whatever it is that is troubling you in terms of a lack of purpose like a permanent solution Maybe that works for a small number of people, but I, I, I highly doubt that most people can find a level of purpose necessary to drive the entirety of the rest of their lives outside of a framework of conscious will moving them in the direction of doing the right thing. Jung told people, he talked about mescaline and LSD in the context of Huxley's introduction of those substances into the Western world. And he said two things in his inimitably wise manner. The first thing he said is, beware of unearned wisdom. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, that's great. And he also said, you... You have to be very careful about, about entering the realm of the gods because you end up with a responsibility that might be more crushing than you can tolerate. And it's the same kind of idea. And I thought, I've never read anyone who wrote wiser words about the dangers of psychedelic use than that. Because he didn't say, well, none of this is real. He said, it's more real than you want it to be. And so watch the hell out. And I think that's extremely good advice. And it is very difficult for people to integrate those experiences into their life. Although my experience with people has been, and I've seen this with lots of people, they've said that they've done mushrooms, for example, and had a mystical experience, and that that provided them with a moral compass that they lacked before that never went away. Mm-hmm. And I've talked to many people who've had that experience. So, But, you know, I've also been in Amsterdam watching the 50-year-old punk rockers trip out on mushrooms and, and beer and go pound out some street kid, you know. Yeah. Right. So there's the, the downside of transcendence is something that's not to be trifled with, and there's also the opportunity not to go to heaven but to go to hell. And that does happen to people, and that can, be, that can induce post-traumatic stress disorder, essentially. So, you know, beware of, beware of wandering in realms that exactly. you're not competent to wander in. <laughs> Speaking of the Lexus, where did the 50 grand come to just drop? Oh, Cordy gave it to me for uh, blowing away Cobain. Oh, oh, I can't believe I just slipped up like that. Oh, God. And here's the greatest thing. I'll never be tried or convicted for the murders of Kurt Cobain or El Duce. Never. But uh, I told Alan, I mean, uh, my friend, who... <laughs> Uh, I'll let the FBI catch him.